Hello there, welcome to another painting tutorial. In this video, we're gonna paint a lake scene with a canoe. If you want, you can take a screenshot of the sketch and trace it. Let's start off with a larger flat brush. We can do a size 12. And we wanna make an ombre sky. And we can, we can start with this purple lilac color. And let's put that over the sky at the top and tape off your edges before you start. Make sure you have enough water on your brush so that the color blends nicely. And then let's switch over to a light pink shade and then add that over the purple because we want those colors to kind of blend together. And then you can take some water and just kind of blend that down Try to keep your sketch and try not to cover it up completely. And you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to blend too much and muddy your colors. So we'll call that done for the sky and then move on to the water. And mix up a light blue shade for the water. And place that where the water starts on the horizon and we want this to be kind of a light wash get some water on your brush and blend anything that's looks streaky and then we're going to start kind of with a lighter blue and then move into a darker blue we can do light blue and then a darker shade of blue. And for that, we can use a phalo blue. And then maybe start all the way down here with that darkest blue shade. You can see that's really rich. And just try to go carefully around the canoe so you don't lose your sketch completely, but still try to keep those kind of smooth, even, and flat brush strokes. And add water as needed. Just trying to get these two shades of blue to blend together for a nice ombre effect. And I'm losing my sketch a little bit, but that's okay. We can still see it a little bit. You can move your brush kind of back and forth. Basically, we just want to get these strokes to be kind of clean. Make sure that you're going along the edge, right up to the edge where the tape is, so that you get a nice crisp edge when you pull off the tape. So that looks good and just kind of maybe step back a little bit and smooth anything that looks kind of rough. We add a little bit more water and blend it if you need to. Just take your time with this part. It could be a nice relaxing part of the painting process. Okay, so that looks good. And now I wanna put in the mountains and I want a pretty dark value for that. So to make that, you just wanna mix a sap green with a Payne's gray. That's gonna give you a pretty dark brown for the base layer of the mountains. And then just go right up to the edge and just smooth your brush down could even try to do it in one stroke or two strokes. And then carefully make that line where the horizon is. And then just blend the mountains together. And that's gonna be an underpainting for the mountains. So you don't need it to be too perfect. Okay, and then the mountains in the background, because they're further away, you want them to be cooler. 
So you could add a little bit of white and then use that color to put those mountains in the background. And let's actually switch brushes because they're quite a bit smaller. So switch over to a size five filbert or size six. And then take that lighter shade and see if you can put it in the mountains in the background. Just give the illusion that they're further away by making it a little cooler and lighter in value using our atmospheric perspective technique. Okay, and you can see how that kind of gives the illusion that it's further away. All right, and then let's do the shadows in the reflection of the mountains. And we can mix that same color. So take a little bit of Payne's gray and mix that with a little bit of sap green. And this reflection, it's also a little more on the blue side. I might take a little ultramarine and mix it in there just to make it a little more blue. And then let's put this in. And just go along where your sketch is. You can use the edge of the brush. And it's just kind of going along. And let's try to straighten out our brush strokes. Make them a little, just because they're showing. So you want to make them look, um, you don't want them to be going in all kinds of wild angles because that's just gonna distract. It'll be kind of a distraction. Get close to that shoreline. And then this part, you gonna cover up the white. Like I said, get close to the edge of the tape so you have nice crisp lines when you pull it off. Okay, so that's looking good. Now let's put in, let's let that part dry. And while that's drying, let's put in the canoe. And to do that, let's use a size seven flat brush. Let's put in our base color, which could be this Van Dyke Brown. And I'm actually just gonna do this dark part that's in the center of the canoe. These flat brushes are great for painting boats because they help you get like straight lines just with the edge of the brush and they help you get um, geometric shapes. So I'm just putting in the darker values of the canoe. While the other parts of the painting are drying. So that's like when you have a lot of elements of a painting, it can kind of help you allow other parts to dry while you're working on other sections. And then this here is just going to go over like that. And grab a little bit of water so that you're able to blend. Okay, and then you can think about a little bit of dimension with the canoe. So let's grab a burnt sienna and put some of these, see if that will show up as like a lighter value. That's not really showing up. So we probably will have to let that part dry. So let's try to put in the tan, the lighter values of the canoe. And we're just gonna use this beige color and again, I'm using that flat brush to my advantage. I'm just carefully trying to put in the edge of that canoe and then do the other side. And I'm going over the blue 
kind of lost my sketch, but I'm going over that blue paint and trying to make sure I don't have any white spots sticking out. Okay, and then the bottom of the canoe, it's gonna be a darker color, so I can go back to that Van Dyke Brown. And then put carefully put in the under side of the canoe. Okay, and I might have to let some of those layers dry. Let's put in the seat, which is also this tan color. We'll just pop that in. Trying not to have too many white pieces sticking through. And then if I wanna give that a little bit of definition or depth, I can grab some of this burnt sienna and just put it on the edges and carefully blend it in. Yeah, maybe under this side. I'm just gonna smooth this out. Okay, so I can let that dry and then let's put a shadow underneath the canoe. So we could do that with a Payne's Gray. Just come in here and put a shadow underneath. Just gonna be like a reflection in the water. Okay. And let's see, we could put just finish this little tip of the boat. Maybe flatten it out with the edge of the brush so it's straight. And then you could try to put in some lighter values of the canoe. Maybe put in a little bit of highlight. And then kind of blend that in with just a damp brush. And to give, to make that look kind of three-dimensional, you could take a little bit of Van Dyke Brown, mix a little bit of Payne's Gray in there, and then make the, the sides of the canoe darker. So it looks like I will have to wait for that to dry before I make that adjustment, just because you can't really paint. You'll know that, you'll learn with painting that you can't paint on top of paint that is not completely dry sometimes. So you, that's where patience comes in, which I don't always have. So in that case, just move on to another section. So we could move on to the trees and on the mountains. So let's grab a, you can take a round brush. This one is a size, what size is this? Size eight round brush. And then let's take a lighter value of green. So we have this forest green here that's a little bit lighter. And then let's see if we could just put in some textures. Kind of make them like just kind of dabbing and try to make this kind of random. The value change is not not as much as I would like. So I could maybe take a lighter, mix up a lighter green with just some yellow ochre and sap green. And let's see if we can put that on top. That's not quite showing up, so we'll probably have to let that dry before we go in with an even lighter value. And the reflections also have some of that um, different texture in it. So let's try to put some of that in. Just kind of making like squiggle shapes with the brush. And this is the sap green. And you could put kind of on the edge there if you wanted to randomly make the trees show up, you can kind of put the, the tips of the trees just 
with the point of the brush. Okay, and then you can let that dry. So then let's take a flat brush. Let's take a size seven. And I want to try to put this foggy layer of like a white glaze. So get some white, mix it up with quite a bit of water and see if we can get this kind of a white glaze over the back of the lake. And that's kind of like a mist. Let's see what happens if we do that. Okay, and then we can just kind of blend it in. It's gonna dry a little bit different. Okay, but that gives you kind of a misty look for the mountains, which I think looks, kind of makes a nice effect. Okay, so at this point you might wanna, you will probably have to let this dry and then come back and do a little bit of refining. So let's let this dry and then come back and just add a few different details. Okay, so now that that has dried a little bit, let's see if we can kind of clean up some of this work. So I want this edge to be very crisp here. I took quite a bit of paint. This is just that tan color. And I'm gonna try to put the edge more defined. Okay, and then I'll take a medium value, maybe the burnt sienna, and then see if I can go along that edge. Okay, and then do the same thing to this part. Okay, and then this part, it got a little bit muddy, so I want to kind of make that a little bit more clear. It's looking better. And then I might just put some more tan on top of the seat, just blend it in a little bit better because it got a little bit too dark with the shadows. So I'll just go maybe even on top of it and then back over this bar. Okay, and then on this other side, I'm gonna clean up that edge. And then clean up the base part and we can use that Van Dyke Brown and then go over that part. See if it'll stay. Okay, and then kind of used a little bit too much water so we have to let that dry, but I would take, we need a darker value. So we take a Van Dyke Brown, maybe with a little bit of Payne's Gray to make almost a black. And then we need a little bit of a dark shadow right in the middle of the boat to show that depth. That's the darkest value. And then be underneath right here it's a little bit darker and then over on this side we'll make it a little darker and then on this edge okay all right so you'd probably want to let that dry and then the last touches for that we would just do the lightest lights for highlights so let's work on another section while that's drying. Let's grab the round brush. This is the size eight. And let's see if we can mix up that lighter shade of green. So we'll take a yellow ochre and a sap green mixed together. And then see if we can just dot in some of those colors. You can see it's just a lighter value green, so it's showing up. with it's just showing up a little better and it's just making some kind of trees and you can just do this like trying to make it look pretty random 
just using the tip of that round brush to make some impressions of leaf shapes. Okay, I think that looks good. So let's just take, let's take a small flat brush. You can do the size five and let's take some white paint and see if we can do the highlights for the canoe. So we'll just go just carefully touching that white along the edge. And that can just give us more of a three-dimensional look, more of a finished look, and just make it look a little more realistic. Okay, all right, so let's call that done. Let's take off the tape and see how it looks. If you want, you can wait until your piece dries to do this which is probably the safest thing to do. But you're just pulling the tape away from the paint. Just carefully pull it away, down and away. Whoops, and that's kind of ripping the paper a little bit. So I'm gonna go from the other side just pull it away and then it's not gonna not gonna rip okay so we'll call that painting complete i hope you give it a try it's a fun summer painting that you can do so if you want to see more tutorials like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video bye